Hello and welcome to our demo theater presentation, Use Literally Anything But Web Mercator. My name is Boyan Shaurić. I am a software development engineer for Projection Engine team. This session I will be co-presenting together with... Thank you, Boyan. My name is Melita Kennedy. I'm a principal so product engineer on the Projection Engine. My specialty is map projections, coordinate systems, and transformations. I hope you find this presentation useful and interesting. Let's get started. Today, most maps and other visualizations of data, either on the paper or on the screen, are on Web Mercator. Web Mercator kind of is a standard coordinate system for the web. It is not clear when you become a standard. Most people believe this happened with the introduction of Google Maps in 2005. So when you open a web map application like ArcGIS Online, as a default, you see a map in Web Mercator. But the issue is that Web Mercator is also used today for images, graphics, and static maps, which are not interactive like web maps. Here in the slide is just one example where non-Mercator projection would definitely be a better choice. The author of this presentation should use Albert's equal area conic projection for the map of contiguous United States. Let's compare areas of three land masses on Web Mercator map. Which one is bigger? On the map, Greenland is bigger than South America, and Antarctica appears to be a huge continent. But in reality, South America is bigger than Antarctica, and more than eight times bigger than Greenland. Web Mercator projection has huge area distortion further away from the equator, and therefore is not appropriate to render spatial analysis in it, or even displaying its results. It cannot display the poles, they are projected to infinity. So planning your Arctic and Antarctic expeditions in this map is quite rough. Also, its rectangular shape gives an impression that our world is flat, which we know it is not true. In this presentation, I would like to go over some common misconceptions and things you might think are true about Web Mercator and you would think they justify its use. First, Web Mercator is a projected coordinate system, not a projection. A projection is a mathematical algorithm that projects a curved surface, like a globe, to a flat map. One particular projection can have multiple projection parameters. It can project longitude and latitudes based on different geographic coordinate systems. Because of that, one can end up with multiple different projected coordinate systems using only one projection. Projected coordinate system is more specific. It includes full definition of particular geographic coordinate system, names a projection algorithm. It also has very specific projection parameter values and has a particular linear unit. Here in the slide, we have all elements of Web Mercator projected coordinate system. As you can see, Web Mercator is created with a variant of Mercator projection called Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. I will mention why is that a bit later. Next misconception, Web Mercator does not preserve shape. Actually, there is no projection that does that. On this slide, I have an example of Greenland. On the left, we have Greenland as it appears in Web Mercator, and on the right, there is more realistic shape of the island. On Web Mercator, northern part of Greenland is stretched in east to west direction compared to more realistic shape on the right. It looks like the northern part of Greenland went through some explosion. It is blown up. Basically, those two shapes of the island are not the same. Therefore, Web Mercator clearly does not preserve shapes. Next. The true Mercator projection is a conformal one, which means it preserves local angles. But Web Mercator does not have this property. To understand why is that, we have to look more closely the map of Web Mercator. Locations on the round surface are defined with spherical coordinates. In our case, these are geographic coordinates, longitude and latitude. 
For example, San Marino is approximately located at 12.4 degrees east and 43.9 degrees north. Locations can be based on either an ellipsoidal or spherical Earth surface. Today's data does not use sphere models, and most of it is defined on some ellipsoid, such as WGS 1984. In my career, I haven't seen spherical data yet. I have only seen cases where geographic coordinates defined on the ellipsoid were treated as they were defined on the sphere, without proper conversion between the two surfaces. Because we can use two different types of Earth models, projection can also have a pair of equations for both. So Mercator projection has two equations that are valid for spheres and two equations that are valid for ellipsoids. Ellipsoidal equations tends to be more complicated. The Mercator projection is actually one of the simplest cases, but we can see on the slide that Mercator projection has another term in the equation when projecting data defined on ellipsoid. Let's say we have a data that was properly defined on the sphere and we use Mercator projection for spheres. In this case, the map is going to have a conformal property because Mercator projection preserves local angles. When we have a data that is properly defined on WGS 1984 or any other ellipsoidal model, and we use Mercator projection for ellipsoids, again, we get the map with the conformal property. Now, Web Mercator used data based on WGS 1984 ellipsoid, but it projects the data with Mercator projection for spheres. This is why we have a name, auxiliary sphere, in the projection algorithm. Does this combination of Web Mercator also result in a conformal map as previous two cases? The answer is no, it does not. Because Web Mercator is mixing two different Earth models, such map loses all good properties of Mercator projection, like conformality and straight rum lines. So basically, Web Mercator was a mistake which got out of control. If you thought that Web Mercator preserves something, the new sees it does not. It distorts everything. It distorts shapes, angles, areas, distances, directions, rum lines, compass bearings, you name it. Next. Some people say that Web Mercator is fine if you use it only at large or very large scales. This is not true. It still requires a scale adjustment, especially when comparing different regions or when you want to display a scale bar on the map. Here I have two cities, capital of Norway, Oslo on the left, and Singapore on the right. Web map views are at the same scale and both cities look roughly the same size. Perhaps Oslo is a bit more bigger than Singapore. Would you say this is also the case in reality? You shouldn't, because Oslo is a significantly smaller city than Singapore. Because Web Mercator enlarges areas that are further away from the equator, even at large scales, things appear to be bigger than they are in reality. Next. The results of geodesic-based analysis are not presented correctly in Web Mercator. Even when the analysis is, is performed accurately behind the scenes, the Web Mercator is not going to display results properly. It is still important to show the results with a profit map projection. The data on this map shows predicted participation anomalies for years 2040 to 2059. The analysis, including distance and area measurements, that created this map was conducted properly. Looking at the map, the band of strong colors along the equator does not look very big compared to the rest of the world. A reader of this map might argue that significant anomalies will affect only a small portion of our planet. They would probably be more concerned by large light green areas north of Russia and Europe. On area preserving map, the results look much different. We can see that significant anomalies will actually affect a larger portion of our Earth and those large light green areas on the north are in fact way less significant. Here is another, more simple example with binning. 
Hexagons were created in area-preserving projections, so they literally cover the same area of the Earth's surface. But they do not look like they do in Mount Mercator, especially those towards the pole. On area-preserving map, those hexagons look more like they cover the same area, even though their shapes do not look like hexagons all the time. Next, data that is based on WGS 1984 geographic coordinates moves with time due to crustal motions and earthquakes. Therefore, Web Mercator is not a static coordinate system. Australia is a perfect example for this. Let's say you work for an Australian utility company. You surveyed a new utility line in 2010 and you published the utility network in Web Mercator as a feature layer. 11 years later, your contractor has to do some maintenance on the network. They take your published data and they overlay it with the current satellite image. Your data on their image now shows to be on the street and not on the curb as it was originally surveyed. Such misalignment can cause a lot of issue for your contractor as well as for your company. If you would have published your data in coordinate system based on Australian datum at the time, geocentric datum of Australia 1994, your contractor would then overlay it with the current satellite image in the new Australian datum 2020, and your data would display correctly after applying transformation between the two datums. And final misconception, web maps are not limited to web mercator. Actually, a web map can be in any projected coordinate system when you're using ArcGIS. Let's look at examples how you can do this in JavaScript API and ArcGIS Online. With ArcGIS JavaScript API, you can basically use any coordinate system for your map. Here I have a very simple example in Equal Earth projected coordinate system. The map has two layers. In light blue are world's countries, and these little red circles represent world's earthquakes. To create such a map, I needed to do only two things. First, I defined the spatial reference variable, where I provided well-known ID for the coordinate system I want to use. In my case, this is 8857. Then, I use this variable to set up my map view. I use it to define the coordinate system of my map and provide the center of the view. With well-known ID, I can use any predefined coordinate system in ArcGIS. For example, if I change the well-known ID from 8857 to 8859, I'll get my map in equal earth projection, but this time it is going to be centered on Asia and Pacific. I can also use more fancier coordinate system like Spielhouse World Ocean Map in a square by changing the ID to 54099. You can also use well-known text strings to create a coordinate system for your map. Here I have an example where I use a Wagner 4 projected coordinate system. A nice thing about providing a coordinate system with WKT strings is that you're no longer limited to predefined coordinate systems. You can basically create and use your own custom projection coordinate system by just changing projection parameters in the string. In my case, since I'm using Wagner 4 projection, I can adjust false easting, false northing, central meridian, and latitude of origin. So let me go ahead and change the central meridian to be minus 158, and latitude of origin to be 21.5. This way, I will get the map in Wagner 4 projection, but now it is going to be centered on Hawaii. In ArcGIS Online, the coordinate system of your map is defined by the coordinate system of your base map. However, it is actually very simple to change it. You go to Add Content to the Layer, and I will browse Living Atlas Layers. Here I'm going to search for Equal Earth, and I'm going to select Equal Earth Global Vector Base Map. Now, instead of adding this data as another layer to my existing map, I'm going to select Use as Base Map. As soon as I do that, 
my previous base map disappears and now I have a new one in equal earth projection. The same way you can change your base map and coordinate system of your map in Map Viewer Beta. You go to Add Layer and again I'm going to search in Living Atlas. This time I'm going to search for Spillhouse and I'm going to select Spillhouse Vibrant Base Map. Again, I use it as a base map. And as soon as I, I do that, now I have a base map in Spielhouse World Ocean Map in a square projected coordinate system, and I can continue designing and creating my map. Currently, there are not many non web mercator base maps available out there. However, you can always create your own base map in any coordinate system using RGS Pro. A co-worker of mine prepared me this base map of Palm Springs area, and I want to use it in my Palm Springs downtown mini app. We can see the downtown on the map in the light red color. This map was prepared in Web Mercator coordinate system, so I need to change that. I go to Map properties and I select coordinate systems. I can see that my current coordinate system is really WGCD4 Web Mercator. Instead, just browsing through all available coordinate system, I first use a spatial filter. I select the extent of my downtown layer and I apply the filter. Now I browse through projected coordinate systems. I select state plane and net 1983-2011 US feet. Here I have two options available, State Plain California Zone 5 and State Plain California Zone 6. Since Palm Springs is in the Riverside County, which uses Zone 6, I choose this coordinate system and I confirm my selection. Once data redraw, I am ready to publish my base map. I go to Share Ribbon, I select Web Layer, and I click on Publish Web Layer. The Share as Web Layer pane opens on the right. I give it the name of the base map, and I provide a short summary of the map. Then I select the type. I want to have a vector tile type. On the Configuration tab, we can already see that the tiling scheme is already pre-populated to match our selected coordinate system. I adjust the level of detail for my map, probably the cities are the best, and I'll hit publish. Once publishing is finished, log into your ArcGIS online and open your base map in Map Viewer. The URL of the published data includes the item ID, which you can use to set up your base map in ArcGIS JavaScript API. Changing the base map in your JavaScript application is also easy. All you need to do is remove the base map property of your map object and add a new layer using the item ID of your base map. Exactly the same way I was changing the base maps of map viewers before, I can use my new base map in ArcGIS Online. Again, I go to Add Content to the map and I select Search for Layers. My published base map now shows under my content and I use it as a base map. Once the map redraw, I get my map viewer in California state plate coordinate system and I continue my work. Up to here, we just talk about why not to use Web Mercator. I also show how you can use other coordinate systems in JavaScript API and ArcGIS Online. We also saw how you can create your own base map in ArcGIS Pro. Now let's listen to Melita and she will explain us what you can or what you should use instead. Thank you, Boyan. Let's talk a little bit about map projection selection. So which projection is the best? Um, below here we've got four options. Albor's equal area, stereographic, azimuthal equidistant, and transverse mercator. And the graphic is yet a fifth projection, mnemonic. 
Well, it depends on what you're doing. So let's look, at, look, at, look into that a little bit more. So Ken Field, who works at Esri and is a cartographic specialist, said in 2019, where projections are concerned, there's really no good default. Every map should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on where in the world you're mapping, the scale, purpose, and content. So one thing you can do to help you is to look at a, a published guideline. Now, John Snyder did one, and he was a cartographic specialist, map projection specialist in the 80s and 90s. And this is a very popular guideline because it's very readily available online. So starting with a map, are you mapping the world, a hemisphere, or continents or countries? So kind of small scale to, to medium scale areas. And then once you got to the kind of the medium scale of continent or countries, were you working with a landscape where the area is uh, greater left to right? Is it greater north to south, a portrait style? Is it a square area? Or is it some sort of oblique area? So here's his, his layout, his diagram, which is only two pages, so you could easily print it out and post it if you wanted to. And again, it tells you what area is mapped, breaks it down into different types of map projections, and then what would, what, which one of those would be, would be useful for a particular case. So what would be appropriate for world maps? Some sort of pseudo-cylindrical, uh, particularly like equal area for thematic maps, like an equal earth or an Eckert four. That's the case where you're doing some sort of thematic mapping. If you're doing a more of a general map, then a compromise projection like Robinson or Winkle Triple could be a pro could be more appropriate. Robinson and Winkle, Winkle Triple were both used for world maps by National Geographic. In some cases, you may be restricted to use a an actual rectangle or rectangular shaped map. In that case, you want want to use some sort of compromise projection like Patterson, or in a pinch, Poincaré, which is not really compromise. But again, it's if you're doing it for aesthetic reasons or for some sort of rare phenomena like time zones, then sometimes this very simple style map can be the most useful. When you start moving down in scale to hemisphere maps, then pretty much azimuthal projections would be, would be appropriate, such as azimuthal equidistant, Lambert equal area, or orthographic. And the pictures we have here, the left one is Lambert azimuthal equal area, and the one on the right is orthographic. If you've been around long enough to use ArcView GIS, ArcView GIS then orthographic was also called the, the world from space projection, because it looks like you're sitting out in space and looking at the earth. Once we move into medium scale and up to large scale maps, what would be appropriate for continents or countries? Uh, azimuthal is possible for polar areas or some area of equal extent. Uh, if you're working in the mid latitudes or you're working with something that's greater east to west, then you want to use a conic projection. Or possibly, again, if it's more east to west extent, you might want a cylindrical, or particularly like if you're working in the equatorial regions. If you have a more north to south extent, then some sort of, some sort of transverse cylindrical would be appropriate. And if you had some sort of a oblique extent, like so let's say you're going to be mapping North America, South America, or Alaska, uh, Panhandle, then maybe you want an, something with an oblique cylindrical projection, which we do have that. Once again, you're moving into larger scales. So what would be appropriate for a topographic map? Then usually a transverse cylindrical, like transverse Mercator, transverse cylindrical equal area, or Cassini. Are all, have all been used for those cases. So when you're selecting based on the projection properties, so when you're working with thematic maps, again, you probably want to use something that's got equal area. So you so the areas are um, are consistent. Particularly when you're going to be comparing areas or you're going to be running densities of objects, running statistics on it that are area based, then you want to use something that's equal area. If you're Want to use something that you're measuring distances, you have to be really careful about this because there's no projection that maintains all distances. 
So you have to, if you use an equidistant projection, then that, that's only going to be good for cases where, let's say, only the uh, north-south longitude lines are accurate, or only the standard parallels are accurate, or only the lines drawn uh, from the center of the map are, are accurate. Regional maps, such as continents or small areas, again, you could use either equal area or conformal. And for conformal projections, that's when you would want to use when you're trying to measure angles. Like for surveying, you want right angles to true main right angles. You were you in the military or you, you're using it for navigation. That's when you would want to use possibly a conformal projection. And then again, as we talked about earlier, world maps should use either a compromise or an equal area projection. So here is the 72 projections that are supported currently in the Esri software, quite a lot. And actually, there's a whole nother set of 32 that are variants on these. So for instance, the Hotina Week Mercator projection can be defined either with two points or with a point and an azimuth, an angle. And then for each of those two cases, there's two variants of those. So that projection actually has four variants. and We only list the one in the original uh, list. So the last couple of releases, we overhauled the documentation, particularly for the map projections. So each map projection has its own topic, and there is graphics there to show you what it looks like. There is a list of the parameters that are used, kind of a history description of it. And a lot of that work was done was by Boyan. So thank you very much, Boyan, for doing that. And it's uh, pretty much, and all of our projections have their own topics now. For a long time, we weren't catching up with the new ones. That's all been caught up with. The Learn team, which is learn.arcgis.com is their website. Uh, our One of our colleagues, Heather Smith, has put together a Learn path where she's put together a couple different lessons talking about map projections and trying to get you get people to become more familiar with them. So for instance, on the this this is the Learn path for map projections. There is choose the right projection. For Cater, it's not hip to be square. And Earth Peel. So what happens when you peel in a digital orange and what into different projections? There's also a later uh, lesson called Make a Web Map Without Web Mercator, which is really interesting. Uh, you do not have to use Web Mercator in your base maps or in your web maps, and this shows you how to do that. So publish your authoritative data in an authoritative coordinate system. Don't use Web, web Mercator. It's not an authoritative coordinate system, like as we learned earlier. Right now in Esri software, we have over 5,600 projected coordinate systems. We have 978 geographic coordinate systems, and we have just under 400 vertical coordinate systems for use. On the transformation side, there is 1,767 geographic or datum transformations and 181 vertical transformations. And we generally always put in at least a handful more every release. So now we're getting into some of our useful links and references and more information for, for y'all. So first one is the link to Snyder's selection guidelines. That's in USGS publication 1395. There is a projection wizard online and which also has been incorporated into ArcGIS Pro to let you customize a map projection for your data. And there's also available in GitHub uh, an ArcGIS Python add-in for a map projection selection toolbar. So the next link is the list of supported map projections in ArcGIS Pro. Again, that's the online documentation or the software documentation. And that's the list of all the map projections that are supported. And then from there, you can link into the individual topics about a particular map projection. We also uh, have a uh, site on GitHub for Esri's projection engine, which talks about our database. So there, there's a bunch of text files that we update every release that talks of, that has information on the supported coordinate systems, units, ellipsoids, transformations, everything, the extents that they use, parameters for the transformations and the projections, and all that's all that's there. And you can download it if if you want. Uh, if you go to Google or another web browser and you type in GitHub Esri Projection Engine, should turn up this website. And then there is also a topic for ArcGIS Online on how to use your own base map. So you're not limited to using ours, because a lot of ours are Web Mercator, unfortunately. 
or someone else's who might be using Web Mercator, you can set up your own and use your own coordinate system for it. And then a few more useful links. These again, these are the links to the learn lessons we showed earlier. So again, the learn path, the learning from map projections, and then how to make a web map without Web Mercator lesson. Then there's a couple blog posts. Again, there's the, there's one that's for Mercator. It's not hip to be square. And then one for here are some equal area projected maps for ArcGIS Online and how to make them. So again, helping you with ArcGIS Online specifically. And the last one on the page is from Dev Summit from three years ago, which was client-side processing and web applications. That was for the JavaScript API when they added support for reprojecting data, but on the client side. So it's much faster than having to go to the server. So thank you very much. I hope you found this uh, talk interesting and useful. Please, please provide feedback to us on the session by clicking the session survey link directly below the video. I actually badger people trying to get this information because I want to know what y'all think. And I want to know what you might want us to do for in the future for, pre for presentations. We try to incorporate that information and put it into upcoming presentations for upcoming conferences. So again, thank you very much. We appreciate you a lot taking the time to come and listen to this presentation. Thank you.